with the recent new MuseScore 4 update, everyone is comparing this recent update to other music notation software like Sibelius and Derico. And if you're not familiar with Derico, well, this video is for you because in today's video, we're going to be comparing and contrasting MuseScore 4 with Derico SE for update. So this is a, again, an apples to apples comparison. I just recently did a video on my MuseScore 4 versus Sibelius first impressions video. If you're not familiar with that video, click on the link down in the description below for you to take a look at that video. Now the biggest difference I've noticed in MuseScore 4 versus Sibelius is the workflow. I think that the workflow is slightly better in Sibelius than it is in MuseScore. However, MuseScore has a very easy to use user-friendly interface and that's something that really attracts a lot of beginner music notation software enthusiasts and someone who wants to compose music for the first time. Sibelius seems a little bit more intimidating, MuseScore 4 not the case. But then we have Derico and Derico is a, a more detailed music notation software. Even the free version, Derico SE, which is what I'm going to be uh, talking about today, is already a very full range software, very in depth, has a lot of details that I want to focus on today. Let's dive right into the Dorico 4 update software. So I'm going to click on Dorico 4. And if you're not familiar with how to download Dorico 4, um, they have an SE version, an unpaid version that is, you know, comparable to the paid version. Of course, the paid versions have more options and more flexibility and more nuanced things that the free version doesn't have. The download process is a little tedious, I have to admit. You have to create an account, then you have to request a download link. So that download link goes into your email and then you have to copy and paste the download link into the download installation software. It's just a whole ordeal. You know, it took me about 10 minutes full just to get it downloaded. So right over here, I have the Steinberg hub and I am going to create a new score. So um, I don't know why there was a long pause there, but anyway, so I'm going to do an empty score. I'm going to write a new song over here. I'm going to use my name as a composer and you right off the bat, it's a very different user experience compared to MuseScore 4. If you are familiar with MuseScore 4, the ability to start a new score is quite different than it is over here in Dorico. So over here, you have the options right away. If you want it in portrait or landscape over here, uh, the music font, uh, you have uh, Petaluma and Bravura and the Bravura one is the, the font is preferred amongst classical musicians. And I believe the, the Petaluma is preferred amongst jazz musicians because those are, that's just the, um, the quality of font that they're used to looking at. It's very simple. I'm going to do the key of a major, and I'm going to create this project. And right off the bat, let me full screen this here, right off the bat, you have a very different experience compared to MuseScore 4. And you have a lot more options. And I'm actually not going to go through every single little detail. I'm just going to be talking about the, the basic overall user interface and workflow and the sounds that are coming out of the MIDI program. So I'm going to click on add single player. I'm going to go to strings. And I'm going to go for violin. And of course, there's, it's not just limited to classical music instruments, by the way. You have other wonderful string instruments here. And of course, I'm, I'm doing violin because this is a violin channel. You have different instruments, different options for your preference. So I'm going to click add violin and very bare bones, but everything looks really nice right off the bat. Now I want to direct your attention to the top left here and you have write, play and print. Let's go through each tab to figure out what this all means. So you have, oh, before we do that, actually, I want to direct your attention down here, flow one. And what Dorico does with its software is that you can separate the score in different movements. This is their way of doing it. So you can, you can add a movement, you can delete a movement. This is all coming from the flows tab on the bottom, just uh, for your information. So I'm, I'm going to direct your attention to the top left. We're going to click on right. And 
as you can see, you have so much information given to you on the left and the right. And what do you what do you guys think of this layout? Do you prefer the mu score layout? Do you prefer the Sibelius layout or do you prefer this layout? For me, I really like the setup of having the icons and my materials on the left and the right side of the screen. Um, something that I talked about in my previous video about mu score four is just you know having to go up and down up and down is not really an efficient thing for workflow purposes i think sibelius does a great job in that but the user interface in MuseScore is a little friendlier a little more uh, intuitive in that sense it just looks nicer on the screen makes it a more friendly experience um, over here however i like the fact that everything is onto the side so if i'm composing for instance I don't have to go up and down, but it's left and right. I find for me, it's a little more natural to go left and right. If I need to do a half note, I can do a half note. If I want to do quarter, I can do a quarter note. So I'm going to do um, for instance, I'm, I have all of this here. Now what's this, what's similar about Dorico compared to MuseScore 4 is the mixer setting. So I like to click on the top over here and you see you have this mixer and you could actually actually let's go back here and I'm going to click on the bottom left not a bottom left the top right over here I'm gonna click on play so you, you you can see that I had to really max out my volume just to get that sound now there's a way to I'm gonna stop this there's a way to combat this I'm going to actually play that one more time with my mixer open. So I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to hit space, but I'm going to press play. And you can see that over here, I have this mixer and I can go all the way up just so that I can see what, um, how loud things are. So if you're having trouble with the volume setting, that's my way of doing it. I just kind of like put everything up in the mixer. Let's try that one more time. Excellent. Right off the bat, the sound is, of course, inferior to the one in Muse Score 4. I think, personally speaking, just based on my experience, it's better than Sibelius, but not as good as Muse Score. So there, there is definitely a difference there. However, what if I want to make it sound more re realistic? If I'm composing and I want to have a more realistic sound, um, sound in the in my mind, I want to maybe create some reverb. The way to do that is to go to the mixer so i'm going to open the mixer here actually i'm going to put everything back on full screen just so that way i have i'm actually just going to just for my workflow workflow purposes i'm going to go over here so you see how i have this violin mixer volume set up all the way up right and now i'm going to go to inserts now, if you have the Muse FX plugin installed on your computer prior to downloading Dorico, you can click on this little arrow down. You can see you have uh, different effects well, with the equalizer, with the delay. Um, you have a mono delay, but specifically, if you're looking for a little bit of reverb from Muse Effects, because you have that plugin installed on your computer, you could actually utilize that in Dorico, which is a really cool, neat feature and I'm going to click on reverb and this is the the setting here and I'm going to I'm going to try to drag it over no drag it over to another window totally failed on that part let's try again let's maybe put everything in not full screen so I can do everything really nicely so I'm going to click on this reverb and Let's go ahead and see if I can play this and you can hear a difference in the actual sound. I'm going to put my volume up just in case and let's play this over here. So that's a cool little neat feature. If you want to combine both elements of MuseScore 4 and Dorico, this is a cool way to do that. And you could also insert plugins. I think that was something that is missing from Sibelius. And a lot of people from MuseScore really are like, yes, we can put plugins into the score. Well, now you can combine a little bit of MuseScore 4 and Dorico. So that's a cool little neat trick. Let's go back to the, the conversation of workflow in Dorico. So I think everything seems very intuitive. And this is definitely a 
a really intuitive software. And let's say I want to combine, you know, all the shortcuts across all music notation software between MuseScore 4, Sibelius, and Dorico. They all kind of act the same. If I want to highlight a bunch of notes, I can, you know, click Shift and right key. Or if I want to do a whole measure, I can just click Command and on Mac, of course, and I'm sure it's a different on window and I can command click, command click, and I don't have to highlight them, but just th these are really cool shortcuts that if you want to utilize, you totally can use. And if I want to do a slur, I can put the slur entire entirely here and it looks really nice. And I can also adjust the height a little bit. And what's also really nice is if I want to completely delete the measure if that's something that I don't want to do very intuitively intuitively this is across all measures uh, for your reference this is not just about one staff or one system I can just I can click on that if I want to highlight something very specific I want to do something uh, specific with that I'm going to do command Z to undo that but I could also just flat out just delete the measure and the software is going to really readjust itself for what, what for your workflow purposes so i'm going to do the exact same thing or if, if it's just easier you can just click delete and it'll just delete that's just one of the other options you have many different options to do this so yeah what do you think of dorico this is a really interesting comparison between MuseScore and dorico let me know in the comments section below and if you want more videos and tutorials on this channel please leave a comment down below and be sure to subscribe for more content like this thanks so much and i'll see you in the next video